Welcome to Dangerous Prototypes. I'm Ian. A couple weeks ago, I went to China and picked up most of a service mount production line. Our goal isn't to go into production, but I've seen a lot of these tools at hackerspaces, in university labs, at other people's workshops, and I wanted to get more hands-on experience with them myself. So, we start with the beginning, which is a solder paste dispenser. This will shoot out solder onto a circuit board. This is what we're going to look at today. After the parts are on it, then it can either go into the reflow oven or onto a hot plate like this, which will heat the solder and melt it so the parts stick to the board. And then afterwards, if you need to do some testing, you can put it into a test rig like this. If there's any joints that are bad or anything that needs to be cleaned up, we've got a board preheater here, and this can heat the board so it's easier to melt and reflow big parts. This is the solder paste dispenser. What it does is it dispenses little dots of solder onto a circuit board. They're precisely measured, and it can also do incremental repeats. You either trigger it by holding down a button like this, or it also comes with a foot pedal that you can step on like that. The solder paste is held in a syringe like this. I just loaded it up with a plastic knife. And then I didn't have much luck using more solder paste than this. Anymore and it seemed to jam up. There's a cap on the top that seals in the air so that the pressure forces the solder paste out. I saw all sorts of solder paste dispensers in the market in China. This one had the most configuration options of any I saw. It's a labeled PE986A, but if you're looking for it on Alibaba or eBay, you're better off looking for the 983A. They seem to be exactly the same. I can't tell any difference. So air comes from an air compressor into the back. That's sort of the noisy part of the project. We had to get an air compressor to go with it. Uh, the air compressor was about $100. It's a small six liter air compressor, so it doesn't take up a lot of space, but it's still really, really loud. So people in the forum have suggested a dental compressor, so we're on the lookout for one we can use here in the workshop. One problem I had setting this up is that the air hose came with a quick connector that looks like this, and I couldn't find any adapters for it here locally. I cut open an air cable that has the normal quick coupling that works with the air compressor, and then I shoved this tube down inside of it with a bunch of epoxy and then used a couple pipe clamps around it to hold it down. I'm not sure it's the best hack, but until I can find an adapter for this bit, that's what I'm going to be using. Power it up. This gauge over here tells us how much pressure is applying to the solder paste. I find about 50 psi or so is working well without using so much air that the compressor is running all the time. There's also a vacuum setting on this one, and what that means is when you dispense solder, at the end it sucks back just a little bit. That helps break it off from the nozzle so it, it goes cleanly onto the board. I'm using just a little tiny bit of vacuum. If you turn it up too high, you can actually hear a whooshing sound. So I assume it's using a Venturi tube by bleeding off some of the air from the compressor through a Venturi tube to actually create the suction that it used for the pullback. I'm not entirely sure though, I haven't opened it up. It shows us the currently set dispensing time, which is in seconds or fractions of a second. That's set with this timer down here. We found 0 0.08 to be pretty good. This has 16 modes that are set with dip switches on the back. And depending on the mode you set, it'll repeat the shots at certain intervals. The interval is set by the switch here in fractions of a second. It's came with two trigger methods. One is a thumb switch that slips over the syringe, and the other is a foot pedal. The instructions suggest holding the syringe at about a 45 degree angle. You push the button and it dispenses the drop. In this mode, it'll stop when I release the button. In some modes, it'll do multiple shots. The solder paste dispenser works better for us than a stencil. A stencil costs anywhere from $15 to $25 for every board. And if you're just doing a one-off prototype and you're not quite sure it's going to work, especially if you're sure you're going to have a second revision, then that's a lot of extra money for each set of boards, especially when boards are so cheap now. So this tool, for the price of about two solder stencils, lets you quickly go over and place drops of solder. Then it's ready to go through a pick and place machine or even be stuffed by hand. I've tried two types of solder paste so far. Both are lead-based. One is Sparkle Paste, a Japanese brand. It was really thick and didn't want to dispense well. It's in this syringe and I didn't have much luck with it. The paste I'm using in here now is Mechanic Paste. It comes from eBay in little tiny tubs for two or three dollars. I never temperature controlled it, it hasn't been stored properly, but it still seems to work okay. I'm going to stuff this board with 0805 components, but also just for a test, I'm going to put down a 64 pin pick on this 0.05 millimeter footprint. Now let's drop the pick on. I 
I want to test it with a variety of part sizes. So I'm going to add a USB jack on here. That's heavier and has more thermal mass, so it'll reflow differently. And I just want to see if they all come out of the oven soldered well. This is our QFP Proto Board version 2, which is available at Seed Studio for about $10, I believe. We use these in the workshop, the prototype projects that we don't want to make a custom PCB for yet. And drop your TQFP chip there, connect up all the extra components you need, including a crystal, maybe level translators, or some sort of USB converter. Now that I've got some demo parts stuffed on the board, we'll toss it in the reflow oven and solder it. We'll go over this more in a couple weeks. In here I've got two extra little circuit boards to hold the board up off the metal tray. A couple of people recommended this trick, and I, I don't know if it's more even or not, but I'm doing it anyways. Now I've got it set up for a solder profile I've worked out for the oven. I think the oven measures a little cooler than it actually is. We've been scorching some boards, but with some trial and error, I've kind of tuned in a, a temperature profile that I'm happy with. And we will start it. And I'll be back in about 11 minutes to check on the boards. The reflow oven soldered the board and it's gone through its cool down cycle. Now we can pop open the drawer and see if everything's stuck. The capacitors did okay. The LEDs as well all seem to position themselves and solder nicely. The button worked out well. Those are always a pain to solder by hand. And the USB jack appears to be okay with no shorts. Let's poke at it a little just to be sure. Okay, now the big chip. There's a lot of bridges here, a few over here, a couple here. It's aligned pretty well, but overall I think I used too much solder and I got it too far underneath the legs. If I was doing it again, I would make sure to get it a bit out here and roll it up into the chip. But with the piece of solder wick, we can just go along here and clean this up, and I think it'll be good to go. I think it's positioned well enough and soldered well enough that we won't have to do any other work than wick up the extra solder. Well, that's it for this week. Thank you for watching. Next week we'll be back, hopefully with a pick and place machine. If not, then we'll look closer at the oven and the hot plate. See you then.